Well, we're back, and we I did another Kubota this time. Uh, the last one was a was a fairly newer uh, model. I think it was a BX model. Uh, this one here is a B1750. I believe it's a 1995 or 96, and it's a good old tractor. There's no fancy computers or nothing, and uh, these these things will run forever. And of course, we put a cab on it. Now on this one here, I had to do quite a bit of tricks because of the steering arm that moves and the pedals. Uh, but other than that, it was straightforward, usually like they always are. And as you can see, we have our usual setup for our doors and whatnot. And if you look inside, you'll see that arm. I'll get on the other side here. You'll see that whenever you steer, that arm down below moves. So we had to make sure there was enough room for all that to clear. And uh, we did it. I had to shorten and bend and modify that foot pedal on that side in order to make everything work. And I also had to do the same thing to these two foot pedals on this side. Both of them had to be cut, shortened, rebent, and modified too in order to, to work with everything. And as usual, it did. All our interior is the same as all the rest. Circulation fan, LED dome light, coolant heater, all our switch panels, mirrors. And if we come around to the back, it's hard to see, but I had a real hard time, not a hard time, but it took a lot of time to make that removable panel in here. And that's there to block like 99% of the air that will get in. And my issue was I had to be able to get this to go as high as it can without touching that panel. And we ma I managed to accomplish that. Open the back window. And if you see behind the seat, this is our panel from the inside. And normally my panels are basically a, a flat piece with a couple of bends in it. This one here, I had to make corners and curves in order for it to work properly. And of course, three little bolts here hold, holds the whole thing in. And that, you take out those three bolts, that comes out no problem. If a guy ever had to. Unless you're removing your pad, there, there shouldn't be a reason to ever take that panel out. We went with a new style lights on the back of this one. I believe these are actually they're the same as what I do on, on the John Deere models. But the client ordered these on his own and they're very, very nice and they're much nicer than the ones that came with it. And we come around this side. Oh yeah, and this one too, we had a nice, we put a nice LED beacon light and I'll show you that. It has, uh, it has all the different settings, whatever you want, I think there's like 14 different modes, but uh, the client can choose which one he likes and, uh, and, and have at her. We put a nice reflective sign on this one with the Kubota logo on it. And if we come around to this side, I did quite an extra, a good extra bit on this one because at one time there was a different valve bank here and it had two joysticks, Sim similar like you would have on a wood splitter. One joystick was to uh, raise the bucket and the other joystick was to curl the bucket, but it wasn't very functional. You're better off having a directional valve like this so, so this fella ordered all this stuff and I installed it for him. And now we have a nice joystick like a, like a normal tractor with all the functions in one. And I had to make this holder here and that is super strong in order to have the whole mechanism function. And I found just enough room to have all the cables good. You don't want to kink those cables too much. 
and I'm pretty sure this is gonna get many, many, many years of use out of this before there's ever an issue. It's actually quite a nice unit. These are the lines that's gonna go onto there, but I don't have the proper fittings and whatnot, so I'm gonna leave that for the client to hook back up the hydraulics. I got the lines plugged for now. And because I had to mount the valve on the cab, I wasn't able to put a large window. Actually, at first I wasn't gonna put a window at all, but I managed to have enough room to put at least a nice small window underneath so the operator can at least see his front tire on this side and you know your bucket and whatnot. Uh, the more vision you can have, the better it is always. And everything fits and works like a glove. Now tomorrow, I will probably take a little bit of time and put a nice rubber seal the best I can on these openings where the foot pedals pass through. But tomorrow we'll put a nice little rubber around there and we're gonna call it 100% done. And again, it's summertime now, so more than likely, this fellow will probably remove his two doors. His tractor will be wide open on each side and he'll still have a roof over his head and all his accessories at his fingertips. And uh, I'm pretty sure he's gonna be a happy camper. And until the next one, I'm gonna probably take the summer off, but I'll be back again come the fall and uh, we're gonna carry on from there with whatever model lands here first, I guess. And uh, again, if you wanna see the detailed videos of this tractor, the fabrication parts when I first started from day one and all the different modes that I went through, you can simply click on the uh, Discord down there below and that will all become available to you. I did not take any more videos of the usual stuff like the wiring and the glass and the accessories because you've seen that in all my other videos and it's exactly the same thing. The only thing that changes on every tractor is the base of the cab. Where it's bolted on and how I do my, my removable panels, the foot pedals, every one of those is always different. But once you get above your fenders, everything else is the same as all my other cabs. So there's videos of doing doors and hinges and, and all the little stuff. I won't show it for this particular model, but if you watch the other ones, you will see all that stuff and it's all the same. So for now, time to get on with some of my own projects and we'll see you in the fall.